Hey everyone, it's Thursday. So it's time for a Facebook slash YouTube live. And I have Mary Eberly here with me, our DNA expert. Hey Mary, how are you doing? Hi Lisa, I'm great. How are you? I am doing well. I am doing well. So guys, I'm so excited as you join us. If somebody wants to give me a thumbs up or tell me where you're listening from that, just I'll know that you guys are hearing everything and seeing everything. Okay. That's just a help help for me. If you are new to one of our Facebook lives or YouTube lives, I want to welcome you and encourage you to feel free to ask questions as if you have a question, feel free to put those in the comments. I will be monitoring those and we can make sure that Mary asks, answers any questions that we might have, or if you've got one for me, I'm happy to answer as well. Um, so feel free to do that. As you guys can probably tell from my, if you've watch these before I am back in my home office yay um, for a bit so that's always exciting for me I'm back home um, I've been helping my daughter move and so it's nice to be home again and um, so yes so I'm here at least for this week we never know <laughs> as we come in hey Bill from Long Island hey Bridget good to see you again from up in Maine um, and hey Lee from Erie Pennsylvania so, hey guys, I will tell you as you guys are coming in, I always love to see where you guys are from. Hey Flo from Oregon. Um, and as I've literally driven across the Eastern half of the state, the country in the last couple of weeks, as I've helped her move from Texas to Tennessee and then come all home in, here in North Carolina, it's been a really interesting thing to, to watch all the weather patterns and the, the terrain as well. But so um, I've experienced everything from a term I've never heard freezing fog, which was absolutely beautiful and a little scary in the mountains yesterday as I was driving, but um, to just snow showers to every, everything. It's been, it's been a bit of a mix all the way around. So it's kind of interesting. So I'm appreciative when I see you guys from around, I know a lot of you have been getting snow and really cold weather. Um, so I am a, starting to appreciate that a little bit more <laughs> as well as you Mary, because you yeah. used to all that cold stuff up there. So, um, Oh, we've got Bonnie in Michigan. Hey, Don, you're back again from Georgia. Hey, Tracy from Oklahoma, Lydia, in Michigan. We have New York, Melinda, New York. And Hey, Dave, good to see you again. Evelyn from Mississippi. And we have Cam from Ohio and Martha. Oh, Marty's here from Ohio as well. So I'm so glad you could join us. I know sometimes Marty, it's hard for you to, to hop in. So welcome. Glad you're here. All right. So a couple of announcements to go with you guys today to let you know what's happening over on the Are You My Cousin website. So I actually have been doing a lot of experimenting th with things and you're going to see more and more things come up. Um, as I start to test out new ways of, of providing information to you guys. So I, I just want you guys to be aware of that. Watch your, watch the emails because I, that's where everything will, will happen will be through the emails and or the Facebook page. So I may periodically ask guys to you, somebody to test something out for me. So just kind of um, know that I'm doing some different things to try to um, help us move forward with our genealogy research. Definitely want to mark your calendars for next week on January 19th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll let you guys do the math on your own time zone. But that is when I will be doing a live Facebook, um, a Facebook live with Jen Baldwin of Find My Past. We did one back in December. Um, and this that was that was the one on finding your hidden American ancestors in British records. Well, we are doing one together this time on Irish ancestors. And I know a lot of us, a lot of you listening have brick walls around that's kind of focus around some of those Irish ancestors. So Jen is going to be, Jen and I are going to be working together to do another live presentation on Irish ancestors and using find my past. You definitely want to do that. That is going to be on the Find My Past Facebook page. So not on the Are You My Cousin Facebook page, but on the Find My Past Facebook page. It's in the newsletter. It'll be in next week's newsletter. I've got it all over the social media. So you will definitely be able to find it. So um, love to have you be able to join us live. You can ask questions as we go. Definitely. So um definitely mark your calendars for that. I am so excited about that one. I, I love talking with Jen. She's so knowledgeable. And um, I'm loving learning about Find My Past more. And I'm using it more 
and, and absolutely thrilled with what the kinds of things that I'm finding, particularly after our last talk. So I'm excited. Okay, we got things flying by over here. <laughs> um, we got Melody from Florida. Hey, Mary Jane. Um, we have John from Wisconsin, from Solon Springs, Wisconsin. Uh, Chris from Quebec. And we have Al Wilson. Hey, um, from Oklahoma City in Oklahoma. So wonderful. Absolutely. So excited you guys could all join us. So, all right, guys, um, I'm going to actually turn it over here to Mary. Um, I know we're going to be, she's going to be sharing with us about 23andMe, because I think a lot of times we have questions when it comes to DNA about the different companies. And I confess, 23andMe is a company that I don't know that much about. I know that they're out there. I know that they're testing. So Mary, why, why test with 23andMe, what do they have offer? Or how are they different than the others? Well, there are a couple of things that make them different. Um, one is based on the way that they first started out um, prior to 2015, where anyone who tested back then got a ton of health information. And um, I, I still see people today who test and they think they have received um, information about every condition in the world. And they, um, I've heard people say they sequenced my entire genome, which is not true. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so to, today they are offering some health information depending upon which DNA test kit you order. Okay, so they have different ones. I remember back when they were doing the health benefits early, like 2015-ish, as you were saying, kind of those early ones. And if I remember, the, the FDA came in and said, you can't do that. Is that right? That's right. That's right. They came in and they said, you're not complying with the law and you cannot offer this health information. So, so mm -hmm. Oh, so now the, do they just tweak what they are? what they can offer now. So it's not the entire, as you said, they're not doing the entire genome. What are they actually, mm -hmm. from a health standpoint, what are they actually testing for? So they did receive FDA approval to test for a handful of diseases. Um, and those are very limited. So for example, um, they have a test for late onset Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if, Alzheimer's runs in your family, you and you're testing because of that, you need to know is is that type of Alzheimer's that runs in your family um, considered to be late onset? Because otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, you get a test result being negative, you know, you still could get an early or maybe there's a middle onset. I don't know. Um, and they're also offering um, testing for the three most common mutations that lead to breast and other cancers in people of Ashkenazi Jewish descent. So um, the BRCA1, BRCA2 genes that we hear mm -hmm. about, um, that is where those mutations are located. Um, and they are the most common three mutations in people having that heritage but they're not the most common mutations for the rest of the population. Okay, so they're so, only, only that particular subset of the population are they testing that particular, those gene mutations for? Well, um, so if you submit a sample they and you pay for one of their health kits, they, they will check for that. Mm -hmm. But if you then, um, you know, you need to be able to think about are these the mutations that are relevant to me? Um, you know, once in a while we find Ashkenazi, excuse me, Ashkenazi heritage uh, unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. So it's something deep, deep in our past, um, and we don't know we have any. And um, all of a sudden, it will show up on a DNA test. So, you know, so that's nice because we get some hint about that when we get our ethnicity estimates. But if you are um, have none of that heritage, but let's say her mother and her mother and your aunt all had breast cancer around age 40 and, and you're worried about it, 
and you do this DNA test, well, if you come back negative and you don't have that Ashkenazi Jewish heritage, that should not make you feel comfortable about your status. Okay. Right? Because the mutations that might be affecting your family are going to be some of those other mutations. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I think that's a, that's that's a good point, definitely, to be able to do that. I know that because of the history in our family, so when I tested for, for those types of things, I went through my physician as opposed to um, the, um, like a 23andMe or an Ancestry Health type thing. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. It's important to go through physicians and um, use people who are genetic counselors who can do a better job you know, they're going to be working with you, taking your family history, knowing the kinds of mutations to look for, um, and, you know, and just be, you know, that's their thing professionally. They've studied it. And um, it's really important to consult with somebody like that. Right, right. And I just wanted to speak to your point. You were talking about that they can, one of the ones that they, they report on is late onset Alzheimer's. And just that, what, as you said, um, that there's so many different types of dementia that are out there that that's, it's very specific. And we just have to be aware of that. It's not good or bad. We just have to be aware of what they're testing for and that the possibilities exist for other types of things. Um, so, yeah. Um, so what, you know, we, so there are limitations obviously in the health thing, but what, what's your favorite part about um, 23andMe? Uh, well, my favorite part is that when they report your ethnicity estimates, instead of just giving you the percents, they'll actually paint your chromosomes with those ethnicity estimates. Interesting. So, okay, so say that one more time. So when they give you your, mm -hmm. they, your ethnicity. Right, right. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll paint they'll paint the chromosomes for you. Right. And it's, it's kind of hidden. So what you need to do is open up that ethnicity page mm -hmm. and scroll down. And at the very bottom, it will show you 23 pairs of chromosomes. And on those, <clears throat> the, they'll be on the right and on mm -hmm. the left will be the different ethnicities that you're testing positive for. And if you hover over any one of those ethnicities, so let's say Scandinavian, then wherever you have that on your 23 pairs of chromosomes, it will light up. You know, so that piece of DNA will light up. Wow. And I, I just saw that they've updated their ethnicity estimates. Um, oh. you know, companies do that. They, uh, they have some new reference panels or new algorithms or, you know, they, they're always trying to perfect their ethnicity estimates. And um, so I think it's fun to check back in and see, you know, what, what is the latest that they're reporting? Right, right. Okay, well, that's good to know that they've, they've updated. I love that. I, I love the fact that they can paint, as you said, paint the chromosomes because, so if you hover over Scandinavian, like your Scandinavian and the ethnicity thing, and then it lights up where those chromosomes are on your chromosome map. Mm -hmm. Is that a way of, I know for you as a genetic genealogist, are you able to then compare that to see, you know, if, if, if you have a match somewhere else, it can help you determine what line your match might be on. So if you're matching somebody else, but you're not sure, help me talk. Mm -hmm. I, I, right. I think you know where I'm going. Right. I'm going to have a yep. hard time getting that out. So, yeah. So, like, but if so, if you match, you know, another woman and her, you have Scandinavian and then maybe she has German ancestry, do your Scandinavians line up on the same chromosome or are you matching more on a different line? Does that make sense? Right. Um, right. And, and that's correct that you can, um, you can take that information and then see where so you, you're seeing let's say you know chromosome three on the left hand side of it you've got the scandinavian showing up and now if you can see the dna that you're matching with that match 
um, you can look and see, is it on chromosome three mm -hmm. where I'm being told that's my Scandinavian DNA? Gotcha. Gotcha. That's, that's a nice, that's a really nice feature actually. It that's is. Cool. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's really uh, a, a, a useful thing. And um, for those of you who are using the DNA painter tool where you can paint your chromosomes with the segments of DNA that you share with your matches, mm -hmm. you can upload those segments. It's through the import function. So you can import those 23andMe ethnicity segments into your overall painting of your matches. That's nice. I just, um, I'm dropping that, um, a link to DNA Painter in the chat box, guys, so you mm -hmm. guys can can find that as well, definitely. Um, so, and as I as I was doing that, so you said you can just upload, it's, is it easy to upload your data into, I haven't used DNA Painter yet, I need to. But it It is, I mean, I, I was, I struggled with it for a while. And then a couple of weeks ago, I have um, a brother and sister whose father was adopted mm -hmm. and he's deceased. And we know that his birth mother is Finnish. You know, so these children of his have some Finnish DNA, roughly 25% from mm -hmm. this Finnish birth mother, birth grandmother for them. And when I went in and pulled that, those ethnicity segments, um, it was nice because I could see like, here's the finish and here's the finish. And in the middle between those two is the match that I think is from the birth father, who's mm. at least partially German. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, this is really neat because I can see that, you know, he's, he's not that segment to the potential birth father who's not Finnish, you know, according to mm -hmm. everything else, um, it's right in between those two Finnish segments. Oh, nice. So, you nice. know, it's more evidence to say uh, that 25% in the children of the adoptee, so the grandchildren of this Finnish grandmother, mm -hmm. um, that that 25% is exclusively from her from her. Nice. So it just really all, it sounds like it's all kind of coming together too, that it's all supporting what those DNA results were supporting your other research there as well. So that's, mm -hmm. that's really nice. Um, yeah. Wow. That's cool. So some of the folks, you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but so is it true? That sometimes we hear that 23andMe will build your family tree for you when you test or what is it? Explore that room, that that rumor, <laughs> that rumor. <laughs> and that concept. <laughs> right, that's what they say. You know, they say that they'll they'll build. You know, all you need to do is do the test, and we'll build the tree for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and a tree to to you and me means my mother, my father, my four grandparents, and so on. Right. Um, and what twenty three and Me does is that they take your matches and they put them in a tree that leads to you. So for, for me, I have one brother who has tested at 23 and me, mm -hmm. and they, they have determined that he's my brother. So, you know, he is at the same level as I am. Mm -hmm. And I probably have 1500 matches in addition to my brother. Um, and they have taken a few of my paternal matches and they've put them into one side of my tree. Mm -hmm. So they haven't said this is your maternal or paternal. And it includes a second cousin and a second cousin once removed. So, you know, those two are together as mother daughter. Mm -hmm. um, and then they must share DNA in common with these other people who are also on my father's side. Mm -hmm. So they, they're, they're piecing together the matches and the matches are um, in your tree. And the, they're basing it on how much DNA you're sharing with them. Okay. 
So that can be wrong. I was going to say, I was said, that was my next question was if they're basing it on the amount of DNA, uh, you know, some relationships can be share the same amounts, but the relationships are different. So how accurate, mm -hmm. you know, is that? Is it so? Is it more of a suggestion then when they're building the when they're building out the putting your matches on a tree? It's more of a suggestion, perhaps. Right, right. They're they're um, you know they they can see that people are matches are related to each other, mm -hmm. and um, they they can they know how much DNA you share with them. They know how much DNA the matches share with each other, mm -hmm. and they're suggesting the relationships. Okay. So it's a, it's a place to start for your, mm -hmm. for your research, which is, um, which is important. I mean, that, that to me sounds similar to maybe through lines on ancestry where they give you suggestions, possible possibilities that, that you match at certain levels, maybe not down that like first cousin or second cousin once removed type thing, but you know, when you're going through those through lines. So again, I think it, it's, it's as, when we're researching anything is really, it gives us a clue and we need to verify it. And we need to then take that maybe not as hundred percent true, but okay, we're related. Let's prove that relationship or let's prove that it's something else basically. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So you're, you're being given some information. They're providing that. And um, if you're in a situation where you don't know who the birth parents are, for example, mm -hmm. um, now you're seeing the matches being clustered together, you know, clustered into individual clusters, and it's helping you understand who these matches are. Mm -hmm. But it's, but it's, um, it's too bad they don't call it something other than a family tree. Yeah, I think that, yes, yes, the terminology, it, it can, for folks who were maybe just starting out, they may not realize that those are not a hundred percent definitely related in that particular fashion. Um, Julie had a really good question. She said, have you made any new discoveries as a result of the tree that 23andMe created? So have you discovered anything new or did it get you started in the right direction? Uh, I would say for me, they, ha I haven't really learned anything. Um, I mean, it's a quick way of, popping in and I, I know off the top of my head who some people are. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then when they're clustered together, then I can, you know, remember like, Oh, right. That King match is on my dad's side, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever the Stevenson match is on my dad's side. Um, because, you know, it's just, it's easy. It's a visual that helps me remember what's going on. Mm hmm that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, cool. That's, now does 23 and me, do they test Y chromosome two and or mitochondrial both? What, what exactly are they testing for them? Well, they test, um, the main thing they test is autosomal DNA, mm -hmm. but in that same test, if you have a Y chromosome, they will tell you what your Y DNA haplogroup is. So okay. it's included in that basic price. And then um, we all have mitochondrial DNA. Mm -hmm. And that means that they're also providing that. So okay. they're, um, they are looking at that and saying, you know, your mitochondrial DNA haplogroup is this. Um, and if you have a Y, then it tells you that your Y haplogroup is that. Um, in cases like me, where my brother has tested, they actually report a Y haplogroup for me. So, okay. so even though I don't have one, they know if I had one, it would be what my brother's is. Okay. Because you, because yeah, they've identified that relationship between you you two there in their database. Okay. So yeah. So to just clarify for folks, I guess, so they 23 and me is testing autosomal DNA, but they also include the haplogroup for the Y if you have for males and then the mitochondrial haplogroups for everyone. Right. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I got that right. 
Um, and so when you test, say, at 23andMe, and I know this question comes up a lot for DNA and, and, and all the different places to test at, um, can you transfer your your results into the other databases and which ones will take them and which ones won't? Mm -hmm. Well, you can take your results from 23andMe and transfer them into uh, MyHeritage, Family Tree DNA, and GEDmatch. Um, but 23andMe doesn't allow you to upload from other companies. Okay. So they... They made one exception a few years ago, and from that, they were only giving people their ethnicity estimates. Um, I wish I would have done that for my aunt mm -hmm. because she um, she passed away, and I never had her tested at 23andMe. Um, so that would have been a nice way to at least see her, what they thought her ethnicity estimate was. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like a two-day thing where, um, I don't know, I think they just wanted more people in the database. So if you if you want to see who your matches are at 23andMe, you need to test there. Gotcha. Okay. So and um, you mentioned you can upload 23andMe data into MyHeritage, Family Tree, DNA, and GEDmatch, not Ancestry, correct? Right. Right. Ancestry is just like 23andMe, where they don't let you upload to their site. Okay. So it doesn't. Okay. Uh, uploads. I'm making notes so I can, I okay. can <laughs> so I can um, create notes for, for folks to the show notes later. Um, so there's actually, um, so the question is, if you have tested then say at Ancestry, if you've tested, okay, so what if you've tested at MyHeritage and Family Tree and all of that, do you need to still test at 23andMe? to get a full picture of map for matches? Mm -hmm. I would say yes. Okay. Um, you know, because you just never know where your matches have tested, mm -hmm. you know, and 23andMe advertises so much on TV. They're very well known. And, um, you know, so people sometimes that's the only place that, that they test. Okay. And um, if you're not in every testing company, you're not going to see those matches. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, okay, great. Because that, that question actually came up when I was doing the Finding Female Ancestors e-course. Uh, Julie, it might have been your question, actually. And um, yes, I was thinking you didn't need to, but it sounds like, yes, we, we do need to be testing at 23andMe, too, since um, you can upload your results, but it still sounds like it's a good idea to to test there as well. So right, okay. well, except that you can't you can't upload to twenty three and Me. Right, Is but you can take your twenty three Me results to other places. Mm -hmm. which is right, important. Yeah. Okay. I guess I wasn't really thinking along lunch, but you're right. Twenty three Me advertises a lot. I mean, just like Ancestry does as well. They advertise a lot, and those are the ones that tend to be. I think known a little bit more because I mean, you can't turn on the TV these days without seeing one of those um, doing that. So, yeah. Right. Plus, plus we've got people thinking, you know, they're going to tell me the day I'm going to die, right. For that health information. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so a lot of people test there um, because they think, Oh, I'm going to get all this wonderful health information. And um, you should know though, that, if you test just for health information, you can opt out of the matching. Okay. So not everybody who has tested there is available to match you. Okay. That makes sense. I see what you're saying. So they're kind of behind the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Julie had a good question. She said, if you've already uploaded ancestry DNA into my heritage, can you, she said, can I also upload 23 and me to my heritage? And the um, answer is yes, right? You can, you can. Um, it, you know, it's going to cost money. And it also means that you will then, there will be two of you and two of you will show up in everybody's match list. Oh, it yeah. won't merge the two? Um, I don't think so. I, I started seeing this over at um, Family Tree DNA. 
uh -huh. because you can upload to Family Tree. Right. And um, just recently, I started seeing, you know, like, oh, look, there's number one, Chris, number two, Chris, you know, right in my match list. So, like, thank you for messing right. up. <laughs> thank you for muddying my match list. Um, uh, so, and then I read Family Tree DNA is saying to people, please don't do that. Um, so I don't know if there's a way to deactivate one, like once you've got the one you like um, uploaded. Um, mm -hmm, that's I think definitely you're true at GEDmatch. You can you can upload from three different companies to GEDmatch, um, and then you can deact. Well, you turn all but one into a research kit, right? And right. then that way you're not you know you're not taxing the system, and you're not showing up three times in somebody's match list. Yeah, that would be definitely, um, if it starts duplicating folks, that's going to be really messy, really quick, I would think. Mm -hmm. Right. So Julie, I'm not sure if that really helps a lot, but it sounds like if you do, it could give you two profiles over at Ancest. I mean, at MyHeritage, if you do that. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I would just check ahead of time to see, is there a way to like you can pick your favorite and then deactivate the other, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, but I would check to see if that's, if, if they do have a, a feature like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes we do get slightly different matches mm -hmm. in, um, depending upon where we transfer from. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Depending on how they go. All right. So, you know, I, I kind of skipped over the very first question I was going to ask you. I probably let me get back to the beginning here. We've talked about the D, we've you know the DNA, the autosomal DNA. We've talked about the health thing. When you go to buy, if somebody's going to buy twenty three and Me, what are the choices of products that they have to choose from? Okay, well they have three different tests. And the first one is about $99. You know, it goes on sale oftentimes, yeah. um, but it's the cheapest and it covers ancestry plus traits. Okay. So ancestry is the, the DNA matches and your ethnicity estimates. Um, traits are things like um, whether you tend to freckle, um, whether you taste bitter taste, um, things that, that are tr considered traits. Okay. <clears throat> and then there's a middle test that also includes health. So it's health plus ancestry. Okay. And it's got all of what I mentioned and along with some health information. Okay. So like I was saying earlier, there is uh, there are those reports that talk about different diseases and your predisposition for them. Mm -hmm. And then it also looks at um, carrier status, which is um, whether you carry DNA for certain diseases that will appear in your offspring if the other parent also carries them. Okay, I see what you're saying. So uh, cystic fibrosis is a good example of that. Um, yeah. and I, I believe that that is it for those, the health things. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the third thing is like the super health <laughs> that where, um, your DNA kit gets processed faster. You get a 30 minute consult, uh, you know, a call with somebody from 23andMe to talk I think it's to talk more about your ancestry results, but it might be about your health results. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like you get put to the front of the line and mm -hmm. that is significantly more expensive. That one's $4.99. Oh, wow. Yeah. Whereas that middle one is $1.99. And they have been really pushing that $1.99 kit, the, the mm -hmm. health. Um, I just, I'm always worried that people um, or that th they think they're going to get more than what they really get. Mm -hmm. Um, so I always, I'm always, um, you know, preach, like be cautious and look at that list. Um, it's been a little while since I looked, but it was hovering right around eight or nine diseases. Mm 
um, including some, you know, fairly obscure blood disorders, um, including celiac, which like I have celiac and I, I used to work in an, in an, an immunogenetics lab. <laughs> and uh, as far as I know, there is no one SNP that defines celiac disease, right. um, but I could be wrong. Uh, anyway, uh, and what else I got, I got a little, you know, that's just like, oh, I, you know, like, you know, if you have celiac disease because oh, you sure. have really bad GI symptoms typically, right. and you test for it through antibodies in your blood. Right. That's like gold standard. And um, there's a form of Parkinson's that they look for. Um, yeah. And then some of those blood disorders, like alpha, beta, trypsin, amylase. I don't know. I'm making that up, but okay. I was like, well, I heard <laughs> those things, like with a whole bunch of uh, words put together. Gotcha. Yeah. So just, we just need to be aware of what, what the, what the, what the test actually tells us. It's very much kind of, to put that in genealogy terms, really, it's like when you read a document, you need to be understand what that document is telling you. And you also need to understand what that document is not telling you. And so it's the same thing with the DNA testing is we need to know what it's telling us and what it's not telling us, what it's able to, um, to, to do for us. Um, right. Right. And, you know, and, and the, and to be our own advocate, you know, not just listen to what they're saying on TV about, you know, you can find out health information and, you know, what, one of the people that proclaimed that his entire genome had been sequenced, um, is someone I know who has a PhD in plasma physics. And um, luckily his wife has a PhD in genetics. And she, at the oh, same wow. time, I said to him, no, they did not sequence your genome. Like it was the two of us saying like, you are totally wrong, mm -hmm. period. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that makes sense. All right. So tell us a little bit about, you know, so for those of you, if you've not met Mary before, Mary is the founder um, of DNA, DNA Hunter Society. And uh, do you want to tell a little bit about that? I'll pop the link in the comments. And if you guys have questions you want to ask, go ahead and um, pop them in the comments for us. Okay. Well, DNA Hunter Society is a community and um, I'm very blessed to have a couple of your folks in the group. <laughs> and uh, we do, uh, we get together between four and seven times a month online for expert classes, Q and A sessions, um, and there's also a community forum where you can ask questions and get answers. And um, so people who are beginners to pretty advanced people actually. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, just digging in more deeply to learning how to use DNA for your genealogy research. That sounds great. Um, and that, I think it's a wonderful, I've heard such great things about it, you know, and that, um, Mary does offer these these amazing um, lectures on and and how to information on on really how to dig in deep with that DNA definitely. So um, and you have a trial you have a special going on right now, don't you? I do, I do. So right now there is a trial subscription for seven dollars for seven days. So if people can come in and look at, um, we have actually a library of recorded talks uh, that I have prepared. And um, th they can also participate in the expert classes, the Q&A sessions um, for seven days. And then after that, they would um, either decide to join as a member or um, decide that, they, that it, it's not for them. So I just wanted to give people a way to dip their toe in the water and mm -hmm. see if it's a good fit for them. That's a great way to do it. And you, you're actually talking more about 23andMe and, and next week's class, right? Mm -hmm. so you have right. A lot of class next week, yeah. Yep, that's the topic. Yeah, so so you know, we'll spend an hour on it. And then um, oftentimes in the following Q&A session, there will be questions that come up that we can explore. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Yeah. So if, if certainly if, if you're interested in checking out Her Society or if you're wanting to know more about 23andMe, even more, yeah, definitely. That's a great deal to be able to, to, to you know, explore for seven days. And there's a ton of stuff over there for them. So wonderful. All right. Well, I don't see any questions over there. Um, I'm looking to see. 
Um, yes, so wonderful guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, as I said, so watch next week. Um, just a reminder, we have the, um, I'll be doing the Facebook Live on the Find My Past page with Jen Baldwin and we will be talking about those Irish ancestors. So I'd love for you guys to um, hop over there and check it out. I will have that in the, again, in the Monday's email as well as in the, um, I'll be advertising on Facebook and Instagram and all that good stuff so you guys can find it. Cause I think it's gonna be really fantastic. I am so excited um, to learn more about that, that aspect of it. Cause it's, some, it's an area of my research I definitely need to know more about. So yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. And Mary, thank you so much. For those of you, Mary does show up once a month. It's wonderful. Um, to talk DNA with us. So um, love for you guys to join us. And if, if anybody should ever have a question that you want Mary to answer, you feel free to um, just drop it over on the, the um, Are You My Cousin Facebook page and we will get that to her. So, Thanks everybody. Yeah. Thanks Lisa. Appreciate it. It's been you fun. Are, you are welcome. And guys, I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.